Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yu Hao from the University of uh, California, Riverside. And uh, I'm excited to share with you our paper titled uh, Sys Describe Principal Automated Static Generation of Cisco uh, Description of Kernel Drivers. Uh, currently, I'm a final year PhD candidate at uh, UC Riverside under the supervision of uh, Professor Zhi Yingqian. And uh, I focus on the Linux kernel security, kernel fuzzing, symbolic execution, and static analysis. And I have published uh, some paper in the top academic, <coughs> academic conference uh, of uh, computer security, for example, SNPCCS, NDSS, and uh, software engineering, ICSI, and uh, FSE. Uh, <coughs> as, we go, <coughs> as we go deeper into our presentation, I would like to uh, provide you with some background and motivation for our work. First is the SysColor, the state of the art operating system kernel father, has found more than uh, 4,600 bugs in the Linux kernel over the past few years. One necessary component of SysColor is a collection of syscall description, which includes the syscalls, the argument of them, and the dependency between them. So, however, to our knowledge, current uh, syscall descriptions are largely written manually, which is both time consuming and error prone. So, uh, now I, uh, I would show uh, an example syscall description for the KVM driver, which includes the following necessary components. The first thing is the syscall interface, which allows a uh, user space application to interact with the driver. For example, we can see the uh, open, Cisco open and the Cisco IO control here, uh, which are the most common one. And they are also can, can be uh, read, write, and others. The next is the device file name here, uh, which is used as an argument in the Cisco open. For example, here is the slash dev slash KVM. Uh, the next is the command value, which decides the sub interface of IO control. And it's the value of the second argument of the IO control. Uh, treating them as separate syscall interface allows syscaller to generate test cases more effectively. <coughs> then next is the argument type, which are other arguments to the syscall interface. For example, the third argument of IO control. Here is, uh, for example, the KVM underscore user space underscore memory underscore region, which is declared in, uh, in live file. Uh, the last one is the explicit dependency between those system calls, mainly involving the file descriptors being returned from one syscall interface. For example, uh, here is the return value of uh, syscall open and uh, used in another one. Uh, for example, the first argument of the uh, first argument of the L control. Explicit dependency allows syscaller to generate valid test cases. Uh, note that the file descriptor can also be returned by syscall interface other than open uh, uh, for some complex driver. For example, here, the IO control, uh, this IO control could also return a uh, return, uh, uh, file descriptor, which is uh, FD underscore KVM VM here. So which will be used as the first argument of uh, uh, next IO control. So we refer to such dependencies specifically as a non-open file descriptor dependency. Uh, notice that it, uh, it is almost impossible to fuzz those syscall handler, uh, inter uh, syscall, syscall interface uh, correctly without knowing this non-open file descriptor dependency. So since current uh, syscall description are largely written manually and not all kernel driver have manually created uh, syscall descriptions, especially compared to the core kernel driver, the uh, core, core, core Linux kernel, the kernel driver accounts for about 70% uh, line of code of the kernel. So the goal of this work to, is to replace this step. So for those uh, human, we would like to replace with our tool uh, SysDescribe. We design a new tool, SysDescribe, which is able to uh, statically, accurately, and uh, automatically generate syscall description for the Linux kernel device drivers. Uh, SysDescribe only needs a comparable kernel or, or even single module, and it can directly generate syscall, uh, syscaller compatible uh, syscall descriptions. And uh, the generator syscall 
descript the generated uh, syscall descriptions are better than manual created uh, syscall uh, description in some degree and the closest to the ground truth. So the key insight of the syscall is that we summarize and model the programming conventions regarding the kernel driver development. This allows us to understand how a kernel driver is initialized and uh, how its associated uh, interface are uh, constructed. At a high level, we can then statically reconstruct the initialization of a kernel driver by faithful, uh, forcefully following the summarized initialization process. Uh, now, uh, let me take a close look at the device drivers in the Linux kernel. There are three first level type of device in the uh, Linux kernel, character, block, and net. Uh, and in our work, we consider character device and uh, block device because they can be accessed from user space by the device file uh, in the slash dev. Uh, the figure shows the results of uh, LSAL in the slash dev, which lists the device files. And uh, here, the B and the C here means the character device or the block device. And the two number, the two number means uh, for each device file are the major number and the minor number. And the combination of a major number and a minor number uh, is called the device number. The device number not only uniquely identify a device and its uh, file name, but it's also associated uh, with a set of syscall handlers. For example, uh, the, the IO control. So uh, with those device, uh, device number, we can know the target function of the IO control. So the string like, the, uh, for example, PDMX and the PPP are the device file names. So then uh, we go a little deeper into the source code of the device, uh, device drivers. In Linux, drivers are, are in the kernel modules, and uh, each kernel module has well-marked entry uh, and the ex exit point, usually defined by micros, such as the uh, uh, module in the here, and the module exit is the, for the exit point. A single driver is usually defined within a single kernel module. Uh, by the way, it is also possible that a driver is defined across multiple kernel modules that have dependency between each other. Uh, here we only show so a simple uh, example. We can see that a uh, driver's device file is initialized in the module int function at uh, line 6 to the line 11. So which involves the creation of two objects, one is uh, 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 one object corresponding to the, uh, we, we can call it driver, which is the struct CDAV here. And another is uh, corresponding to the uh, device, which, we, uh, which is the struct device here. And for the struct, uh, struct CDAV, uh, which would uh, defend the, uh, defend the uh, related uh, Cisco handler later, for example here, the CDAV used in, the, in this function. And finally, it would define a, a related uh, uh, syscall handler. And the, the device file name would define it in the uh, device structure. So for example, the device object would be used here and finally set the uh, device file name. So uh, and uh, another important thing is each device must have a unique device number. Uh, for example, the, the line six, we can say the, this, uh, uh, this is the device number for the, uh, for the driver. And uh, so, uh, so this device number can decide both uh, the device file name and the uh, Cisco handlers. And we can, uh, and we can also, uh, we also use this device uh, number to, uh, to pair both uh, the, we call it the driver structure and the device structure. And then, uh, if we, we, we use two syscalls, for example, the open, open this uh, device file, and uh, then uh, I'll control. So if, uh, when there are two syscalls like that from user space, and uh, the finally, uh, they would call to the, uh, the syscall handler here. So if they, they uh, open this uh, device file, the syscall handler would defend here. That's uh, how the device driver works in the source code level. Next, I would show you the uh, syscall describe design. 
Uh, the core design of the sets described is based on the modeling of well-established contract between the co-kernel and the drivers that we just introduced. So we have two analysis phase. In the kernel module analysis phase, we can recover the Cisco handler and the device file name. And in the Cisco handler analysis phase, we can recover the command value, argument type, and additional Cisco handlers. Uh, first is the uh, kernel module analysis phase. Uh, this describe can detect the kernel module by the initialization function, mm -hmm. by, by this uh, uh, micro module unit. And then this uh, describe recognize the existing of any kernel driver and recovers the basic interface created and exported to the user space. Uh, which is the supported uh, syscalls. For example, in this driver, it supports the open and the uh, IO control. Yeah. And also, it would uh, recover the device file name. Uh, the, uh, as we show in the figure, we, uh, we know that there are two uh, types of objects uh, uh, that are defined during the initialization of a kernel driver, and they collectively defend the basic uh, driver interface. Our goal is to identify the two types of the uh, objects and associate them. So one is the, what we just called the uh, driver object, which, for example, the uh, CDEV structure for the character or Jenny desk for the block device. Another type is the, uh, the device object, which is the device structure device. And the to pair uh, those two types of the object will rely on the device number assigned to each type of uh, object. Uh, now we can track both uh, driver and the device object by the type as just mentioned. And, and we can simply expect their relation to uh, critical fields at the time when the object are registered to recover what we want, what we need. So Cisco handlers are stored in the file, uh, file operation structures and the, uh, which are assigned to the driver object and the device file name are stored in the device file uh, object. And for each uh, discovered uh, Cisco handler, this, this, this describe attempts to recover additional detail about those uh, interface. This includes the command value and the argument type supported by the IO control handler. And in addition, this uh, describe can recover additional uh, Cisco handlers, which can be needed to recover the uh, non-open file descriptor dependency we just mentioned. And finally, uh, this describe can uh, translate those uh, uh, the things we just found into the syscolor description directly used by the syscolor. Uh, for most kernel drivers, the main driver logic is encoded uh, in the IO control uh, Cisco handler. So we identify the command value of IO control by checking their uh, use in switch case statement or if condition. For argument type, we model the common function, uh, common kernel function such as uh, copy from user or copy to user to achieve this. Uh, in the line 30, uh, 34, we can say the destination argument type of the copy from user uh, is, uh, is the structure, uh, is this one, structure xx underscore type. So which should be the, uh, which under the command value uh, cmd underscore one. So this al allow us to infer the, the argument type. Then the next thing is to, uh, to, to recover the additional uh, Cisco handler. So in, other, in addition to the uh, module int function, Cisco handler themselves can also create and register additional Cisco handler. This is the most common in the uh, in our control handler where additional uh, structure file object are created. And uh, uh, in, uh, inside a structure file object, Jack, there is a pointer points to the structure file, uh, file, file operation. So, uh, which is corresponding to the set of Cisco handler associated with uh, this file object. So in addition, uh, as, we, as shown in the figure above, we can say that uh, typically a, a structure file object is paired with a file descriptor that uh, will be returned to the user space. And uh, uh, for example, in the figure below the line, uh, 
37 and 41, we can see that our control handler with the command value uh, 7D uh, underscore 2 has created a file descriptor and a file, file object and pair them through a function called uh, file, uh, FD uh, underscore install. And then it returns the FD to the, inter, uh, to the user space. So uh, uh, next I would show you the evaluation results of the sys describe. First, we present uh, overall results of the sysdescribe, uh, sys, syscall uh, description generated by sysdescribe. Later, uh, we would also compare the, them against the results uh, uh, from other static solution, for example, diffuse, and the dynamic solution, for example, CASG, as well as the syscaller description, uh, which is a manual created uh, syscall description from the official syscaller repo. And here, the sysbot configuration is from sysColor and uh, tries to enable as many as possible drivers in QMU. As we know that uh, uh, kernel with OES config cannot bot, but uh, dynamic solution need a botable kernel. So we compare results at uh, sysbot configure uh, also. Uh, before we compare sysdescribe with other static solution, uh, Diffuse. I, I first briefly uh, introduced the uh, overall workflow of it uh, about how to uh, generate a syscall description. First, Diffuse would uh, identify syscall handler structure from a predefined uh, list of uh, structure type. For example, the figure in the left. Uh, second, Diffuse would identify the corresponding device file name, uh, which is any constraints, a constant string used near the reference of the Near the reference of the uh, structure, for example, here, uh, the string in the right figure. Finally, Diffuse would apply a uh, interprocedure static analysis to syscall handler to uh, recover the argument. So in the high level, there are some uh, advantage of this describe compared against the Diffuse. The first and the most important uh, difference is uh, the modeling of the kernel driver. Instead of using a predefined heuristic list of uh, structure type, uh, this, <coughs> this describe is based on the well-established contract between the core kernel and the drivers. So this leads to this describe could recover this call handler and the device file name reasonably, uh, which means a uh, last false positive or false negative for the syscall handlers and the device file names compared to the diffuse. Another benefit is that uh, this describe against a more accurate indirect call resolution from the kernel module analysis phase. Uh, which improves the results later when recovering the argument of uh, syscall handlers. Since diffuse uh, do not handle indirect uh, calls, so it would miss some uh, command value and argument type, which located in some uh, indirect call. Another issue of the predefined heuristic list of the structure type is the list is uh, likely not compatible with the newer kernel. Meanwhile, the contract uh, says described based on is unlikely changed. So it can work on the newer kernel. Uh, and another thing is uh, this describe could recover non-open file descriptor dependency, which means more syscall handlers. Besides, this describe directly generates the syscaller comp compatible uh, syscall descriptions. Uh, since our evaluation is based on a new version of uh, Linux kernel, which is uh, 5.12, we had to port diffuse to a new version of uh, LVM, which is required by the Linux 5.12. We also fixed some issue in the diffuse, uh, and the fixed version is marked as diffuse underscore uh, F. The issue are mainly under two categories. First is uh, correcting hard-coded uh, offset for certain types that have changed uh, in, the linear, uh, in the kernel 5.12. Second is uh, fixing failed tracking of uh, copy from user destination object due to changes in compiled uh, LVM bitcode. So uh, we can see that uh, this describe requir uh, recovers uh, less syscall handlers structure than diffuse or diffuse fix. Uh, but however, in fact, most syscall handler structure found by diffuse or diffuse fix are actually false positive, given that they require only uh, 48 or six, uh, 60 uh, device file name. Typically, it should be almost uh, one, one by one. 
And in order to understand the correctness of the generic statistical description of different uh, solutions, we manually collect the ground truth and take a deeper look at those results. So we randomly pick 100 kernel driver as database for the compression uh, against the diffuse. And for the ground truth collection to mitigate the potential errors we make during the process, we always cross validate with the syscall uh, description generated with syscall and from syscaller, which is the manually ones, and to see whether we missed anything. Overall, it takes more than uh, one person month to collect the ground truth for 100 uh, drivers. To our knowledge, no, no other work have build a, has built a ground truth data set uh, uh, for the evaluation. And uh, we can say uh, the results are expected uh, as our high-level comparison. This describe has a significant uh, advantage in all aspects uh, compared to the diffuse. Uh, as for the fuzzing comparison, we picked 30 out of the 100 uh, kernel driver based on whether they are compiled and uh, available in the QMU. Uh, this, de uh, this describe has a significant uh, advantage in both coverage and the number of crash, which is expected given the accuracy results. It is worth noting that uh, this describe achieve much more coverage and, uh, uh, and the number of crashes uh, for KVM than the diffuse, because uh, this describe recovered three non-open file descriptor dependency for the KVM. Uh, then we would uh, compare uh, this describe against the dynamic solution, for example, the KSG. Again, I first introduced the uh, overall workflow. First, they would, uh, the KSG would uh, scan all the device files available under the slash dev, for example, the figure in the left. And the second, they would uh, hook the syscall open on those device files and get the syscall handler structure, for example, the figure in the right. Finally, they would apply an uh, inter-procedure symbolic uh, execution to Cisco handlers to recover the argument. In the high level, there are also some advantage of this describe compared the, against the KSG. The biggest difference, differences between uh, this describe and the KSG is that uh, this describe is a static solution and the KSG is a dynamic solution. So KSG require requires a, a compatible bootable kernel and which can run in a QMU also or some physical machine. And dynamic instrumentation is also necessary since it requires the whole kernel. So it cannot work if there is only a single loadable module. Besides this fundamental difference, uh, the dynamic solution also need a modeling of the kernel driver. It's the same as the static solution. And the KSG, however, only has a limited uh, modeling, which brings some false negative or even false positive of the <coughs> Cisco handler recovered by KSG. Another limitation of dynamic solution is uh, it does not support all compiled uh, modules, which requires additional dependency. For example, we need to in plug in some uh, related hardware, and then the kernel module would, uh, uh, the device file, uh, the device file would appear uh, under the uh, slash dev. Dynamic instrumentation also means that KSG cannot directly work on some uh, on the kernel with some fixed uh, configuration, for example, the Android kernel. The lack of the inter-procedure analysis make uh, KSG have a lot of false negative when recover command value and the argument type. So, uh, so we can say in the syspot uh, configuration, uh, this describe can recover uh, 185 Cisco handler, while KSG really recovers uh, 88 uh, Cisco handlers. And the reason of uh, more Cisco handlers found by Describe belongs to the uh, what we just mentioned, the reason we just mentioned. Uh, we also ta uh, take a deeper look, or look at those results. To be fair against the KSG, we choose to include a subset of the 100 uh, drivers that are compiled with the uh, Syspot configuration, which is uh, 70 drivers, and uh, the other three uh, are compiled uh, only under the OES config. We can see the results are also expected as our high-level comparison. KSG has, has a false negative in all aspects, especially for the command value and argument type, 
because of the, their lack of support of the inter-procedure analysis. And uh, because the uh, syscall sys description generated by KSG in many cases incorrectly associate uh, different uh, drivers with the same set of uh, syscall handlers, so we compare against uh, KSG by finding the whole kernel using all available uh, descriptions. Uh, and uh, this describe had better results in both coverage and the number of crashes again. And uh, we also try to compare uh, this describe with the uh, this color description. And, uh, uh, and uh, because the 57 uh, Drivers are missed completely in the six color description. So to be fair against them, we choose to include a subset of drivers that are covered by them, so which is uh, uh, 43 drivers. And the overall, uh, oh, the overall results, uh, six describe gain, uh, generate e uh, either more command values or argument types, more argument types for 13 drivers. And so we try to, uh, analysis those 13 drivers to understand uh, why we generate more. And uh, we found some, uh, some bugs in, the, in, in their uh, syscolor uh, descriptions, so, which is generated by humans. So we summarize the, uh, the results by the type of bugs for those uh, drivers, which is identified by their corresponding uh, control handlers. And then we can say that uh, this describe recover uh, 80, uh, 70. 78 uh, missed uh, command value or argument type across a total of uh, 13 uh, drivers. In addition, we say, we say manual uh, syscall descriptions have three positive with regard to the uh, argument type uh, across two drivers. And uh, so the, the result means that ongoing human maintenance is needed, but however, it's almost uh, none. No, no one to do that. And we, we also find that uh, only one, one of those bugs, uh, this one, uh, is eventually fixed on the January 2022 before we started to report them. And this analysis shows that those syscall description bugs can uh, persist over some times. And so far, we have reported all the bugs to the syscaller and all of which are fixed. And we also shared our uh, generator syscall description to, to them. Uh, then we inspect the gap between the six describe and the, the ground truth and the summarize the reason which will be helpful for the for future impo improvement of the, the six describe. For Cisco handler, the major reason for the false negative is that uh, Cisco handler structure take a dynamic construct variables. For the device file name, the main reason for the false negative is the device file names are also uh, constructed dynamically. As for the false positive, the reason is that their major number or device number are generated dy dynamically, so we, so we cannot match the driver object and device object uh, uh, accurately. For the command value, the false negative of the Cisco handler would bring uh, false negative of demand uh, command value. And the second reason is the non-trivial uh, use of the, the command value, which brings both false positive and false negative. For example, in the figure above, uh, there are some calculation on the command value before the use. And another example is the figure below. There is a function pointer array for each command value. So we cannot trigger, uh, we cannot track them. For the argument type, the main, uh, First negative is from the first negative of the syscall handler or the command values. Besides the incomplete data flow tracking all the failures to model the additional functions, which, uh, which is defined in the inline assembling code. For example, the get user, which could also, uh, which is similar like the copy from user. And uh, for the finding results, these describe still make significant improvement in, in the coverage compared with the six color uh, descriptions. However, more code coverage not means, uh, make, more code coverage makes sense, but not, more, uh, not, max, uh, not means uh, more code coverage would directly means find more, uh, more bugs 
So uh, this describe achieves a few uh, crashes than the six color description because uh, the manually curated uh, description can include things that are out of scope for the current uh, six describe. Uh, and overall, the ground truth results are better with uh, aspect to both coverage and the number of uh, crash crashes compared with uh, uh, this describe. We would also try to uh, generate the uh, Cisco description for the Android kernel for Pixel 6. But however, one thing is uh, when finding Pixel 6 kernel crashes are captured by the RAM dump model in the Pixel kernel, and there's no, not any uh, public uh, document about it, so we don't know the root cause of those bugs. And uh, here are some examples of the bugs we found uh, during the finding uh, of the Pixel 6 kernel. And uh, yeah. uh, then the next is the limitation and the future work. First is the, for the argument, there would be some specific value or value range. We haven't handled this uh, in our tool now. And then <coughs> we, we only support the most common Cisco L control. So we would support other Cisco like the red white uh, in the next step. Besides, there are uh, there are some uh, uh, other explicit dependencies. Besides, is uh, we, we, we would also consider in the Cisco for uh, Cisco for other components in the kernel, for example, the network device, file system, BPF, and something to fast them. So, uh, so and uh, we we, uh, we open source our tool in this repo. Uh, finally, there are three takeaways of our presentations. Uh, we did a new tool, says describe to generate Cisco description for Linux kernel driver, and uh, uh, which can significantly improve the effectiveness of the fuzzing test for the device drivers. This can help identify more bugs in the device drivers. We evaluate the accuracy of this describe against uh, other solutions, such as uh, manually created uh, Cisco this color description and uh, showcase its effectiveness in real world. Based on the data gathered after analysis, uh, analyzing uh, hundreds of uh, kernel drivers. And we, all, uh, we also open source the implementation of this describe, and this can help uh, other researchers or, or, or people in, the, in this field to build upon our work. Uh, that's all. Thanks, thanks everyone. And a question or discussion? Um, for the new Cisco definitions that were built, did uh, did those get fed back to uh, Cisco? So, sorry, could you speak aloud? I, I cannot hear you clearly. Oh, uh, the the new Cisco fuzzing descriptions uh, that that were generated. Yeah. Um, did those get sent upstream to Syscaller um, for use uh, generally? You mean the Cisco description we generate can directly use in Syscaller? Right. Yeah, we, we, the, the, the Cisco description we generate can uh, almost directly use the in Syscaller because uh, in Syscaller there are doc documents about how to add a new Cisco description. So we need to uh, at least the make generate some, some command value in the Syscaller side to make the new uh, new one to work. So it's almost uh, directly used in Syscaller. Uh, my, my question is, is this a static tool or a dynamic tool? I see in the previous slides, you construct the relationship between some runtime objects. But, but I think if you use static analysis, maybe you can get the structure of the uh, input of current modules. This, you mean whether this tool is a totally static uh, solution? Yes. Uh, yeah, our solution is totally static. In fact, uh, uh, when we try to design the tool, uh, we have some uh, consideration that, uh, uh, so if there is, a, for example, maybe we can use some dynamic solution which um, 
may, may be more straightforward and accurate, but uh, it sometimes need more engineering work, so we choose not to use them. So in order to make the solution as simple as possible, and uh, which can be used in real world, so we only choose the most basic things, and we only use the static solution. So if you have the source code, comparable source code, and then you can generate syscall description without any other requirement, any hardware or something. Uh, but, but I see in your slides, uh, th there are some relation construction, such as uh, struct file, struct device, right? Yeah. Th then how to do that? You, you can uh, find the name string of the driver, yes? So we, we can, uh, we can perform a, a, a static analysis on the, our, our tool is based on the LVM also. So it's a static analysis based on LVM. So we can perform some static analysis on the LVM IR level. And uh, so we can get the type information and uh, some other, uh, other necessary information we get and uh, per perform uh, inter-procedure analysis and uh, track the data flow and uh, something. So for, uh, for the kernel crashes that you found on the Pixel 6, I'm wondering if you've reported any of those to, to the Android uh, to the Android bug bounty pro program. Uh, in fact, I sent the picture to some uh, some employee of them, but uh, but they said that in fact there are some files in the phone way fast and. Uh, if they can get that files, they have some internal tool to read some information and uh, know the root cause. But uh, for those information, they can do nothing. Okay. okay. Um, you mentioned that um, a bunch of the false positives that you got were because the uh, device numbers were dynamically being generated in some cases? Oh, uh, yeah. Do you all have any um, ideas of how you would address that in the future if you continue to work on this? Uh, it's uh, dynamically means, uh, here means, for example, there are some, uh, uh, typically it's possible that there is a function uh, something like generate a new device number or, or major number or something, and then th we would uh, the the uh, the code would use that number in some other place. So the traditional static analysis is uh, maybe it's possible to track the data flow, but it's hard to uh, to to be very accurate. So in our future work, uh, in fact, I have I'm doing that that now is uh, I want to apply a symbolic acution, which is more, far more accurate, but uh, maybe uh, face the park solution issue. So, but, but since we, have our, we already have a, a static analysis, so we can perform a symbolic acution based on, based on the results of static analysis. So we only explore a limited paths of the driver, and then we can track the more accurate data flow or even value flow of those dynamic uh, construct uh, value and to get a more accurate results. And uh, yeah, I'm, work I'm, in fact, I'm currently working on that now. Thanks. Any further questions? Mm. So that's all.